just to hear just one thing, uh, the permit that you were getting. Okay. The time is 6.30 p.m. in the Louisville Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of Tuesday, June 7, 2016. It is now called to order, and we do have a quorum present. The first item of business is approval of the minutes of the May 17, 2016 meeting. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, may I have a motion to approve as presented? So moved. Motion by Alvin. Second. Seconded by Mary Ellen. Those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item three is public hearing for uh, agenda for plats. Uh, there's a 3A and a 3B. We'll read both of them together. Uh, staff will discuss both of them. We'll have one public hearing and uh, we will vote uh, together unless there's an objection. Uh, so 3A is the final plat of Wendell Metals Edition. Phase 3A, lots 18 through 26, block F, and lots 21 through 27, block L. This contains uh, 2.69 acres, zoned estate townhouse, ETH, located on the northeast quadrant of Farm to Market 544 and Farm to Market 2281. This is a replat of a portion of Crossroads Center South, Phase 1, Lot 1, Block A. 3B is the final plat of ARTX Park Edition, Lots 5R, 16, and 17, Block A, containing a 5.152 acre Zoned open space AO, heavy industry HI, is located on the east side of Railroad Street, <coughs> approximately 2,390 feet north of ben <coughs> Bennett Lane, a portion being a replat of ARTX Park Edition, lot 15, block A. June? Good evening, Commissioners. Um, there are two plots on the agenda tonight to be considered for approval. There are no variances requested. Staff has reviewed the plats and they meet all the minimum requirements and the staff recommends the approval of the plats as presented. Commissioners? Okay, thank you, June. At this time, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone that wishes to speak on uh, uh, Windale Meadows or ARTX Park Edition, uh, please come forward, sign in and state your name. Having no one come forward, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, commissioners, comments, questions, concerns? No. Anything? No. All right, then may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve as uh, proposed. Okay. Second. All right, motion by Steve, seconded by Kristen. Those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Okay, public hearing, item four, zoning and special use permit. Uh, 4A is a public hearing. It's consideration of a zone change request from Agriculture Open Space AO to single family residential R7.5 on approximately 0 0.3081 acre. It's a tract of land out of the E Pickett Survey, abstract number 1014, located at 820 South Charles Street, as recommended by Julie and I'll to this Rigel property owner case number PZ 20160616 June good evening commissioners um, the approximately 0 0.3 acres property is currently located on the east side of the Charles Street and north of Yale Avenue um, the residence on this property was built in late 1950s and once the rezoning has occurred the property owner will submit a final plat application in conjunction with the uh, replot of 812 South Charles Street, which is directly north of the subject um, parcel. The request is consistent with the surrounding residential property, which are zoned single family residential. The current zoning of the property is agriculture open space, which allows for a residence with minimum lot size of one acre and requires 100 foot setback from all property lines. Um, this property does not currently comply with 
um, the one acre requirement or the 100 foot setback requirement. The existing house is a legal non-conforming structure, which can exist as is their grandfather, but any new construction or platting would require the property to comply with the current zoning, which is AO. Um, the proposed zone change will make this property consistent with the zoning of the property in the general area. They are surrounded by R7.5 currently. And um, once the zoning is approved, the plat will be um, will move forward in compliance with the R7.5 zoning. So staff recommends the Planning and Zoning Commission to recommend approval of the zone change request from agriculture open space to a single family residential district. If you have any questions, let me know. Did you receive any comment from neighbors? Or no, we didn't. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Anyone that wishes to speak on uh, on four uh, A, please come forward, sign in, and state your name. All right. Having no one come forward, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, commissioners, comments? Okay. If not, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Kristen to. Recommend approval. Second. Second. Alvin. Seconded by uh, Alvin. <laughs> Those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Mr. Chairman, this item will be considered by the City Council in a second public hearing on Monday, uh, June the 20th, uh, 2016, at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> okay, item 4B. It's a public hearing. Consideration of the special use permit, SUP, for an outdoor auto display and sales facility with two associated variances. It's on approximately 1.2219 acre tract out of the E a day survey, abstract number 11, located at 1240 Texas Street, legally described as Ralston Outdoor Edition Lot 1, Block A, and ACI self storage edition, lot two, block A, as requested by master plan consultants on behalf of Ralston Outdoor and Mark Hayes, the property owners, case number SUP 20160606. Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, little ca housekeeping to begin with. Um, we had passed out copies of two letters of support for uh, two neighboring auto dealerships that are in this general area. Uh, those came late in, in the day and were not included in your packet. This request is for, uh, is a request to uh, allow the two properties to be used as a uh, auto sales and display uh, type use. Um, this property contained an auto sales um, dealership for quite a few years. 2013, the dealership that was there had moved on to a larger location and uh, subleased the property to a church. And in uh, April of 2014 is when the city adopted the special use permit process. And that process um, primarily allows uh, PNZ and city council to consider certain uses that may potentially be incompatible or intensely dominate uh, particular area in which they're located. Um, in some cases, they can be made uh, compatible with the provision of uh, enhancements to the site. Um, another big factor that we look at is compatibility with any long-range plans or small area plans <coughs> for, for a given area. Uh, first, I will uh, cover some of the enhancements that the applicant is planning to make. Uh, and again, if you will look at the aerial photograph, you can see that there are fairly intense uses in this area. There are a lot of automotive type uses, um, but the uh, SUP process was uh, specifically uh, designed to ad address these type of issues where you do have um, certain types of uses that um, have negative impacts on certain areas of the city and, and really dominate the land uses in that area. Some reason I don't know why the screen is not working. When the laptop moves, it sort it, something sorted out. Okay, maybe we let it set for a little bit. It'll <coughs> it'll get going. 
Um, like I said, I'll cover some of the enhancements. The um, overall, there is um, there is a billboard on the site that uh, the applicant uh, proposes to remain. But that does trigger uh, a variance request uh, that will have to be considered by the city council in conjunction with the SUP. And um, both uh, variance requests uh, deal with signage. The, the first one is is a request that the existing billboard remain in its place as is. And the second variance is to allow um, second on-site signage. There's currently a, a pole sign. Uh, I believe the church uh, information is still on, on that uh, on that sign. When that sign was erected, it, it required city council variance uh, because our ordinances only allow one freestanding uh, sign on, on a given premises. And so that, that variance was granted. The applicant is proposing to replace that sign with a monument sign one year, uh, after, after one year, if the SUP is approved. Uh, the applicant is also uh, planning to enhance uh, landscaping. There is a landscape buffer. Uh, but I believe uh, some of the trees may have uh, died over the years, so they are supplementing the existing landscape areas with uh, additional trees um, in uh, locations where, um, where, where there's space, where space allows additional uh, landscaping. I believe the biggest improvement that they're planning to make is uh, they're planning to clad at the uh, front and uh, all of the north side and a portion of the south elevation with uh, cultured stone which will give the, the building uh, an improved look. So overall, uh, like I said, the uh, applicant has made a, a very good effort in trying to provide visual enhancements, uh, but the, um, the biggest issue that staff has is um, the long-range plans for, for the area. In your packet where it was included some uh, several pages from the I-35 uh, redevelopment plan, and uh, that plan uh, strictly calls for, uh, as opportunities come available, that um, these areas should be redeveloped into more office uses or retail, restaurant, and other support uses, particularly at the, uh, since this property is at in such close proximity to the uh, Business 121 and I-35 intersection. Um, several of our long-range plans identifies that intersection as a focal point for the community. And, um, the, the community has, has spoken very loud and clear in those planning processes that, that they would like to see that, uh, that area redevelop uh, over time. And of course, we do all realize that it's not gonna happen instantly overnight. It will happen uh, little by little and pro most likely property by property. Um, but uh, over time, the vision is for that area to uh, redevelop into more of, of an office, um, <coughs> office center. And um, I believe the um, attachments in your packet did show that there, you know, there were some uh, very in-depth analysis that show that there is a market for those types of uses. And uh, staff can attest just from um, the volume of calls and inquiries we get, there, there are uh, companies looking for properties to redevelop. Um, I think a good example, I think, of the vision is the, the tollway frontage, the, one, uh, the 121 Sam Rayburn Tollway on the southern portion of the city. That had develop into um, a center, an employment center with a, a lot of office buildings along with the support retail and, and restaurants that come along with that. That corridor is pretty much built out and so uh, we feel that you know, the time is right for the I-35 corridor to redevelop to accommodate those type of uses. Uh, and again, that falls right in line with the Louisville 2025 plan which identifies um, this intersection, this focal point as an ideal location for an employment center um, with, the, with the land uses that I had previously described. Um, with that, uh, I will turn it over to the applicant. Uh, they have a short presentation. Uh, what I may try to do, since we're having difficulties here, I may try to re-plug in and see if the presentation will come up.
commissioners, are you seeing uh, the, the presentation on your screen? Yeah. No. <coughs> As I mentioned earlier, the applicant uh, will make a short presentation before the public hearing is open and uh, will be available for questions after the public hearing. With that, I'll turn it over to um, Maxwell Fisher with Master Plans. Thank you. Chairman, Commissioners, Maxwell Fisher with Master Plan, 900 Jackson Street, Dallas, Texas, 75202. I appreciate your time tonight. If you have a PowerPoint you'd like to share, go ahead. Okay. As mentioned, the staff did a great job of presenting uh, our proposal. Uh, we would like to ask the, the uh, commission to uh, reestablish our, our use here by SUP to allow auto sales facility. It's a facility uh, property that was developed for this type of facility several years ago. Um, it, it's you know gone vacant, and we tried to we use basically. It, uh, lease to a church and and they have since gone out and then since then a specific use permit process um, has been established and is required um, and we you know given some of the site challenges uh, and what the sites basically d designed for uh, we feel that auto sales is one of the only uses that's viable for this for our property um, and so as we move forward we are proposing as you see the site is is fairly um, it, there's a parking lot and, and one building there on the right you know, we, we would be uh, making extensive renovations to the exterior of the building, add in some landscaping to really improve the aesthetics of the property. There's another shot of the building. So our site, a little bit, a little bit of context, we are kind of shoehorned in. There's a, there's a self-storage facility, uh, which typically has a very long life that, that sort of surrounds half our property. We have an auto sales facility, a repair facility to our south in an auto sales facility south of that. And so um, these are some of the uses that are in our immediate area. And if you kind of back out a little farther, you have kind of a heavier commercial, uh, you have crane rental, building supply and storage, um, a trailer store, and, and then some auto sales facility and landscape design in the immediate area. And we're right in the middle of that, uh, of that section. Here's, here's some pictures of the, of the uses in our, in our immediate area and kind of the flavor of what's, what's in our area. Here I want to show that there are some challenges at this site. This site, actually, the property sets about 16 feet lower than the most recent I-35 improvements. The highway is about you know, 16 feet, so we're actually kind of buried uh, compared to the highway. It's a very difficult site to see. Um, and you'll see here on the next picture, this, one also, this one's actually looking north, northwest. It also shows... Um, just a little better grade differential there. So th this is traveling northbound. So we're up or northbound on, on I-35. Uh, this, this is the um, Bel, Bel Air ex exit. And so I'm pointing there at the, at the actual billboard that sets in our property, not, not the actual detached pole sign that's much smaller. You, you cannot see the property until you get past that exit. Um, and, the, and so if you miss that exit, then you have to go all the way up to Fox Avenue and turn around and come back down to corporate uh, to, to actually access our property. And so it's about a three and a half mile journey to get back to our property. And so the point being is it's, it's a property that uh, requires a destination use. You have to, you're not going to go by uh, and you're not going to see and see a, maybe a fast food place or other retail and think, oh, I'm going to stop there and quickly get off the highway. Because of the lack of convenience and access and visibility, there are only a certain number of uses that, can, that, that would be able to actually um, viably locate there and, and be successful. And so um, usually when someone's shopping for a car, they're, they're, that's their intention is they're out looking and, and shopping at cars and, and, and kind of going to and from some of the, the auto dealerships in the area. Here's our site plan. As mentioned, we're out adding some trees in the site where we're, we're devoid of trees. Um, here's our, our actual exterior building improvement plan. We're, right now it's, it's tilt, concrete tilt wall. It could use a freshening up. Uh, and, and a bit of stucco. So what we're doing is proposing to do cultured stone on the exterior uh, for uh, basically uh, the most part of three facades and then a bit of uh, painting the stucco on the back uh, facility that's not, not visible from the highway. 
We do have some letters of support uh, from a couple of the area businesses that are also in the auto industry, um, and basically that their support is that they, you know, uh, based on the fact that when you have other auto businesses in the area, it actually drives additional customer traffic, and that not only benefits the auto sales industry, but also other businesses in this corridor. Um, as, and I, and we, we can appreciate, um, as a former city planner, I can appreciate um, a comprehensive plan and um, you know, that all the efforts that go into making a, an overall redevelopment of the area. But I think one is important thing here um, to note is that this is a very small parcel. Um, there's a lot of challenges, um, and we feel that um, this is a, a use that's viable right now that puts the, puts the property back on a tax base at a higher rate. Um, and then, you know, we're, we're, you know we'd be happy uh, potentially to sell to a large master developer if they wanted to come in and do a larger plan to assemble property in accordance with the recently approved master plan, you know, we would sell at that time. There's not a lot of, uh, of huge infrastructure investment. It's a parking lot with a small building that exists, and so it's not like we have a, um, a lot of uh, um, hindrance and in, in, in exit strategy out of that property. And so um, in due time, we'd be happy to cooperate with that type of uh, redevelopment if, if somebody, you know, showed up with with the right amount of cash. So um, we, we ask that you consider that and uh, can take that into consideration with our request. And um, I think I'll, I'll stop there and be happy to answer any questions you might have. Commissioners? What type of vehicles do you intend to sell there? Whether it be all new, used, new, new and used? It, it could be, it's most likely probably going to be used um, given the, the size of the facility. It could be new and used. There's some of the some of the cutting edge um, Echo Park, and I don't know if you're familiar, Echo Park is kind of a pre-owned uh, one and two year um, old vehicles where they, they kind of, when you enter the store, it's kind of more like a, an Apple store. It's very high tech. There's not a lot of hassle, meaning the, the salespeople aren't on commission and so forth. So there's, there's businesses like that that are interested in, in coming in. In this particular case, it, it is a property that's somewhat dated, and so we really need to uh, spend some money on making the property look better. And so it's hard to say right now, we, you know, we, we're no, we don't have a particular specific tenant in mind because we can't use the property for what we, we would like to use it for without this special authorization. So when, you know, if it's granted, we would definitely work with our broker team um, to, to bring, bring forth the best, the best tenant that, that the property can command. How many um, uh, employees do you see working there when, if you were to have that built there? Uh, I, I, would, I, I would say, you know, it varies depending on the number of cars sold there. You know, typically, you know, probably five or ten at most. And, and uh, Mr. Ralston is here also. He might be able to, to share additional information on that, more specific information. But uh, typically, that, that, you know, you have a sales team and then you have some other support staff, you know, service, service staff um, servicing vehicles. So it could be five, ten, fifteen. It really just depends on, on the outfit that's coming in. Is there any way to tell what your average sales price per vehicle might be based on what you're intending to do? I, I really, we wouldn't know that information at this time. Okay. Uh, maybe a question for Richard. Is this close enough to 35? Do they have any incentives involved for any kind of upgrades or changes? Um, not for this particular use, but if, if, if a company did locate into this building that was creating jobs, uh, that would fall in line with the um, requirements of our economic development policy uh, under those guidelines, So, which you would consider on a case-by-case -case basis. And then along the same line, the billboard, uh, is there an issue with that, with the expansion of 35 or no? Uh, no, I believe uh, very little of this property is going to be affected by the I-35 widening, most of the uh, right-of-way acquisition has been on the west side of the freeway. Okay. Uh, I don't believe any of this property uh, will be needed for the project. Thank you. And Chairman, if, if I may add one thing tied to that, that comment is that, you know, with the SUP process, this gives the city an opportunity to require improvements that we're proposing to make here with the additional trees, the exterior um, improvements, and we're also proposing, it's not part of this request tonight, but it'll go to council. Um, it, is that where we're proposing to move, remove a, a detached pole sign, a smaller sign in our property, and replace it with a monument sign within one year of approval. Those are things that wouldn't normally be required if, it's a, if a use went in there that's allowed by right. They could just go in and reoccupy the property as it exists today with, without those improvements. And so we kind of feel this is kind of a win-win situation um, 
with this SUP process. Okay. I have a question. Um, this, I guess this question would be more for you, Richard. Um, I, I don't know where we are in the process of the whole Mill Street intersection realignment, but I know this is pretty close. Do you think once that alignment is kind of redone, how close is this property do you think that is? Well, actually, um, the Mill Street intersection would move further northeast. Oh, it's going to move north. Which will, you know, because right now that intersection is so close to the Hurtage Road intersection with Business 21. So the idea is to create a bigger separation so it will move further up. Okay. Um, I believe the uh, illustrations in your packet kind of show uh, conceptual alignment. Um, and that will, will, um, will give us an opportunity of, of providing additional areas for land assemblage for, for redevelopment. Okay. And uh, that is also something that's going to be probably looked at a little bit closer as part of the uh, current uh, I-35 um, corridor overlay that is currently under development by our consultant. We expect to adopt that here in the next few months. That's going to be an overlay zoning district that will cover the entire corridor, including this property. And there will be enhanced uh, uh, requirements for all of those properties. Um, and even um, additional uh, uh, requirements based on the character or character zone. And um, that, that, that overlay will discourage uh, the addition, any additional automotive uses in order to move towards implementation of the overall vision. Okay, so if we approve this tonight, we're already going against the plan that, that we're great. about to adopt. Well, that's the overlay. The plan, um, the, the I-35 corridor re redevelopment plan was adopted in 14. Okay. Um, as well as the Elias Bill 2025. Both of those plans call for redevelopment, uh, calls for, um, you know, calls for that intersection to be a focal point with uh, primarily office uses and uses that support that. And, and our SUP ordinance you know, specifically states that in order to approve an SUP, um, or, or that the PNZ and Council cannot uh, approve an SUP if it is not in compliance with any of our long-range plans. That is a, a very big part of the SUP process. <coughs> and it's a tool that the city can use to help us move forward in, in implementing our long-range plan. I guess, why do you think that a car dealership would be the best use of that property? Well, we've had, we've had our broker team has had some interest from, from various car dealers. It really, it's, it's a site that's, that it's, it's challenged, like I said, in many ways. There's visibility, access, um, the uses around it uh, make it challenging for other type of retail. Um, and so those, those things combined, a retailer, you know, they want a, they want a property to feel safe and secure and that it's going to be a viable use that, that can sustain there. So th that's why, you know, it, it's, it's designed for a car, a car auto sales facility. It, it, it's not, you know, it's, it's still a decent sized uh, surface parking lot area. And so someone who's going to take over only the building, you know, they also have that, the surface parking lot that would also um, remain vacant. And so. Um, it, it just makes sense given those challenges combined with the fact that it's it's been designed for the use in some ways. Okay. I, <clears throat> I have a question. How many pre-owned cars do you think that location will hold? Um, on our site plan, I'd probably go to our site plan here. We have a we have number of spaces required for just parking, and then we have. Oh, if I, 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 this is an approximation, but it looks like you know up to seventy-five to one hundred cars in that in that parking lot uh, as it exists. Yeah. But right now the plan is basically to do the dealership to spec in in hopes of finding a tenant, right? That's correct. Yeah, if we improve the property and, and if the and if the zoning allows the use by right. 
then you, you remove some of those those hurdles, the, you know, the time and the, and the money of going through the, the zoning and title process, in this case, a specific use permit requirement, it will definitely help in, in enticing that um, take. So. Sure. Anyone else? Mr. Fisher, thank you very much. Thank you. Any additional comments uh, from staff before we open the public hearing? At this time, the public hearing is open. Anyone wishing to speak on this subject, uh, please come forward, sign in, and state your name. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm Doug Ralston, the owner of the uh, Southern Track that's on your display. And I'd like to thank Maxwell for the presentation, but I would like to submit to the commission that this, this is a hardship situation for me. I was minding my own business, had a good tenant in Louisville, Mitsubishi, and they purchased a property on the uh, west side of 35 and sublet my building to a church and unbeknownst to me, uh, that changed the use of my property. And it's been uh, not leased for over a year. And this is a natural, it was built for automotive because uh, when I originally built it, it was uh, directly for a, a dealer and the northern half was for the parking. So this is uh, strictly within the neighborhood. I mean, I could, I could, and I certainly respect long range plans of the city, but I have a auto repair shop to the south and a enormous uh, self storage to the north. So th th we're not changing a huge use anywhere, but this is, uh, you know, I I've fallen into the city of Louisville crack here and uh, this was not something I approved. It was not something I had any notice of. So I've had a hardship and I have no other use but to seek uh, SUP. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wells. My name is Mark Hawes, uh, 141 Dickens Coppell. I'm the other, the other owner of this property, and I, I agree with everything Mr. Ralston said. We, we had no idea that the zoning had changed and therefore we were gonna be required to come back and get an SUP. Um, a couple other things you had mentioned about a car lot. I, I mean, I handled the car lots that, that have been here. We've only ever had one tenant ever interested in these, the use of the property, and that's been car lots. I mean, you know, from Driver Select to Mitsubishi, they've all been very successful here. And um, you know, Mitsubishi left to, to build a bigger lot, and that's when it kind of fell through the cracks. And um, Alvin, you had said about the number of cars. Really, I don't think there's ever more than 50 cars on the lot. Um, and I, I mean, it's, that's fairly typical. So we kind of got between a rock and a hard place here. And, and someone said something about office. We just don't, like I said, I've had 50 calls on this property and I've had 50 car dealers and maybe a truck dealer or two. And so that's really based on the location and the surrounding. That's, that is the highest and best use today. 20 years from now, who knows? But you know, we're, not, we're not looking to run a car lot here for 20 years necessarily, but for, for today and the foreseeable future, that seems to be the highest and best use in our opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All right, having no one else come forward, the public hearing is now closed. I, I just had a couple of questions. Um, if you grant the SUP, 
um, does that restrict the property owner to this one, if, if they lease it or rent it out to the one person that's there? I mean, what if that one individual or that one business uh, would fold or leave? Then what happens? And um, a, a car lot can op or can cease to operate for a maximum of 90 days before having to get another SUP. So okay. if one car lot, and that's what happened, like uh, they mentioned, uh, a good example is Mitsubishi. They moved across the freeway to a, a, a former Saturn dealership, and there was a, a, a gap of operating uh, of less than 90 days where you can continue to operate without having to get another SUP. But if you go, go over that 90-day threshold, then a new SUP will have to be um, obtained before operations can uh, begin once again. And then my next question was, if the commission voted it down unanimously, uh, does it go to the council, then they have to have a full... Uh, yes, if full there's a, um, a recommendation for denial, be it 6-0 or a 4-2, uh, okay. um, would still be a denial. And to overturn PNZ's recommendation, the, uh, the charter, the city charter requires a supermajority vote, but uh, that is defined as a 5-0 vote because uh, it requires uh, a three-quarters vote of all members of the city council, and that does include the mayor. He normally does not vote, though, so that's... That's how the arithmetic um, is calculated. Um, it would require a 5-0 vote from the council to overturn a PNZ denial. Okay, thank you. All right, commissioners, have um, some comments. I had one other question. So, if the if the SUP was denied, they still could operate something out of that space, just not a car dealership. Uh, correct. That is correct. Uh, this uh, site is zoned. Um, the SUP is about the signs, not the business, right? Yeah, any permitted use in the, dis the zoning district that it is located in. Um, let me just verify real quick here. I know it's either, I believe it's general business. Yeah, either district. Uh, yes, it's zoned uh, light industrial, which is probably uh, the one zoning category in the city that has the broadest uh, list of permitted uses. Anything from um, uh, any type of a retail use, office use, church, of course churches are allowed in any district, so there is um, a, a, you know, a wide variety of permitted uses that would not have to go to the SUP that could operate at the site. Uh, and the staff gets calls every day for those, those type of uses uh, for folks looking for, looking for space. Um, we had sent quite a few uh, folks looking for space um, um, had uh, given them this address and the broker's information, but uh, never did hear um, anything uh, materializing on that. And so the, the only other question that I had was, in your opinion, based on the calls that you get, what, what do you feel is the demand for office space? And, I mean, do you feel like realistically this corridor changing is 20 years away, or do you think it's maybe a lot closer than it might seem? I think it's definitely a lot closer than it might seem. Uh, you have to really start somewhere on any journey that you're going to undertake. Uh, I think our old town is a very good example. Uh, you know, m many of you may remember what it was like 20 years ago before all the plans were put into place and put into motion. But you have to be very steady, very deliberate, you have to be very consistent. And um, however you know, we do feel for, for the owner, we think there are uses out there that, that could use this property. They just need to be marketed to those uses. I think uh, um, this has been primarily marketed for, for auto uses. And uh, there, there is a demand. Uh, like I said, we, we get calls every day from folks looking for uh, space where they don't really need um, highway frontage, but they just need space. They need a, you know, parking. They need, and they need a building of the size. There's, there's a high demand for this type of a building. I think we've even sent several churches their way. Anyone else? Okay. I mean, I guess I'll just say that approving the SUP concerns me because I'm I'm worried about 
um, once you start the process, we may not be able to get that converted over for a really long time, then it's kind of out of our hands. And I, I personally sat through um, a lot of those Louisville 2025 meetings, and there was a lot of citizens that were really pushing for redevelopment of this corridor. I think it's really important. I think the city, the citizens of Louisville think that it's very important. And that's why I'm going to have to vote no on this proposal. Anyone else? If not, uh, may I have a motion? For or deny? Yes, I'll make a motion against. Okay, motion. Second. Motion by John, seconded by Steve. Uh, those in favor, signify aye. 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 Uh, that was unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this item will be considered by the City Council in a second public hearing on Monday, July the 18th, 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, having no other, uh, no other nothing else to go before the commission, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. By Mary Ellen. Second. Second by Alvin. Those in favor, aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.